are very familiar to me. I have taught them uh, particularly uh, general relativity. Uh, so let us begin from beginning and uh, also let me suggest that if you have any question at any time, do not hesitate, just stop me and ask me. The whole idea is to get to the bottom of the whole thing. Uh, right, so we know uh, that from Einstein's work that if there are any two event close by and you set up any coordinate system, if this event happens to you at the coordinate x mu and this is a nearby event, so therefore this event will happen at x mu plus dx mu, you have set up your coordinate system. Then what Einstein showed was or rather he developed a theory in which the proper distance between the two events denoted by ds square is given by a space time metric which in general is a function of space time coordinates themselves and Einstein guided by his special theory of relativity knew that it the proper time interval between the two events better be an invariant no matter which coordinate system is being used or so someone might be using some other coordinate system for the same events his coordinate for E1 would be x prime mu and coordinates for E2 will be x prime mu but then the proper distance must be physically measurable quantity and therefore it should not depend upon the coordinate system one is using. You could have called this alpha beta after all they are all being summed over, they are dummy variables and if this two have to be equal then it is clear that the metric must transform like a second rank tensor. I leave it to you to show this in the tutorial if someone uh, has some genuine doubt about this then can ask me about where notice that x prime sigma is the coordinate for the same event in x prime coordinate system and x lambda in x lambda coordinate system is a coordinate of the same event. So, these two are evaluated at the same physical event okay. and so d s square being invariant automatically tells you that relation between g prime alpha beta and g mu nu must be given by this. But of course, these are all kinematics Einstein showed that the metric has a dynamical role to play. In fact, the dynamical role is to describe the so called space time geometry which manifests as gravitation and in particular there are certain geometrical quantities. One is the connection which can be shown to be related to the derivatives of the metric. where uh, yeah, a little bit about notation, whenever I use comma, so the notation I will put it here. So, any quantity if I say comma mu what I mean is that quantity partial derivative with respect to x mu. Similarly, any quantity with semicolon mu what I mean is, is the covariant derivative. So, if it is a vector. So, these are certain uh, convention which are followed in a standard manner 
and I will be using those conventions. Uh, right. So, this is the connection because as you can see any covariant derivative requires the Christopher symbols and one can show that Christopher symbols themselves have a transformation properties which are not like tensor. All right. So, in the primed coordinate system, they are related to is one more term okay this inhomogeneous term uh, i have i i don't recollect properly so it can be verified so there is a inhomogeneous term that makes the connection doesn't transform as a three rank third rank tensor now, the true geometrical quantities that describe the space time geometry are the Riemann tensor These are some shorthand mnemonics to how to remember to construct these tensors. The thing to note is that the Riemann tensor is antisymmetric in the last two indices. So, this is This of course, transforms like a fourth rank tensor and then one constructs second rank uh, Ricci tensor and a Ricci scalar. So, let me also the convention I am following is the following that this is obtained by just contracting the top index. And similarly, the Ricci scalar is just so. I've gone over a bit rapidly because I'm assuming that most of you are familiar with some basic uh, tensor calculus. So so far, we have only set up the tensor calculus part, and then one can show because in physics we know physics is where action is. So, everything essentially follows by the least action principle the dynamical equation and in particular uh, Einstein and Hilbert that is why we call it Einstein Hilbert action. The total action can be written as Then there is also the matter action, which is we can have fields, derivatives of the fields, and also metric and derivatives of the metric.
So, this is the total action. This part corresponds to the action of the geometry. As you can see, the whole thing is invariant. The total action is a scalar under general coordinate transformation. The thing is to remember is that d 4 x changes under coordinate transformation, but root minus g d 4 x is a is an invariant under general coordinate transformation and that is the reason for the volume element. The invariant volume element is given by root minus g d 4 x and you demand that the metric g mu nu and the matter fields when they actually evolve the true classical evolution of the metric and the matter field is such that they extremize the action. So, that means, if you are following the true dynamical evolution of the metric and the matter field, then if you make tiny variation around the true g mu nu evolving around the true matter fields evolving, then up to first order the action being the extremum up to first order there is no change in the action and from there you can obtain your Einstein equations. Yeah, please. Oh, this part is not visible? Yeah, okay, I will write it somewhere else. So, the question was the lower part was not visible. I have been instructed by Ajit that any question is which is asked, I should repeat repeat the question because everything has to be recorded. Well, there might be a RTI sometime. Yeah, is there a question? Yeah. Good question. So, the question which has been asked is that the root minus g d 4 x is not the only invariant. Uh, there could be other scalars, coordinate scalars one can construct, but the point is that remember the notion of local uh, equivalence principle. The entire general relativity rests on special theory of relativity and the equivalence principle tells me that if I go to a small enough freely falling frame, then in this freely falling frame, the laws of physics must have the same form as they do in special relativity without gravity. So, therefore, in special relativity without gravity, which are the volume element? There you are only talking about, let us call the coordinates as x a and the proper distance is uh, eta a b d x a d x b and the invariant four volume element is d 4 x and so on. And therefore, in order that your theory which is valid in general curvilinear coordinate system, in order that they have the property that in a freely falling frame, they must reduce to the quantities you are using in special relativity, whatever you take as the volume form, volume element must in the local inertial coordinate system must reduce to the special relativistic uh, volume element. In special relativity, if your x mu are the Minkowskian coordinate system, then d 4 x is the Lorentz invariant four volume element and therefore, only root minus g d 4 x when you choose go to a local inertial frame reduce to this and that is the reason why you use those quantities in general relativity that reduce to uh, 
special relativistic quantities in a local inertial frame. Yeah. Correct. Its determinant is minus one. So, so if you choose eta mu nu yeah. as in the matri matrix form as plus one. Okay. So determinant. So determinant of eta mu nu is minus one. So why do we need to take root minus? One? Yeah. So the, 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 that's a good question. So first of all, let's ask how does d four x transform? under a general coordinate transformation. It goes as a Jacobian d 4 x and what is Jacobian? Jacobian is the determinant of del x prime alpha by del x beta. All right. You can show that the metric g mu nu when it transforms to g prime mu nu the determinant g, g prime goes, so g transforms to g prime equal to g divided by j square. This can be easily proved that the determinant of the metric under a general coordinate transformation, the new g prime is related to the old g as this and therefore, you need to put a square root so that d four so root minus g prime d 4 x prime from this you can see is nothing but root minus g divided by j because of the square root and d 4 x prime is already j d 4 x and this is root minus g d 4 x. So, it is invariant. Okay. Right. So, let us come back to the action. Um, I hope at least this part was visible someone had raised the So, least action principle tells me that your r mu nu minus half g mu nu r is 8 pi g c 4 t mu nu. where T mu nu is the energy momentum tensor and the physical interpretation for energy momentum tensor is this that T 0 0 corresponds to the energy density of the matter, while T 0 i interestingly has two interpretation either you can say T 0 i is the ith component of the momentum density or T 0 i can also be inter interpreted as the flux of energy density moving in the ith direction, but of course, they are the same. Relativity gives a unique relation between energy and momentum. So, therefore, it is not a surprise that T 0 i can be interpreted in two ways. Then you have T i j T i j is nothing but the flux of i th component of the momentum density in the j th direction. Okay. So, T mu nu essentially characterizes the flux of energy and momentum density as well as the flux of momentum density in any arbitrary direction. And what Einstein equation therefore tells you is because the right hand side by the way I have set the cosmological constant 0 which of course in cosmology plays a very important role, but in local physics the cosmological constant is so tiny that in normal galactic scale their contribution is hardly important, but if you are talking about gravitational waves coming from a distant galaxy then how the amplitude of the gravitational wave will fall with distance, their cosmological constant will play an important role. But for as far as sources are concerned, as far as 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 far as equation of motion for the gravitational wave amplitude is concerned, cosmological constant will not play an, an important role. Right. So, the left hand side as you can see 
is pure geometry. R is the scalar curvature of the space time related to the Riemann tensor which is essentially related to the space time geometry while the right hand side has essentially aspects of matter and how it couples to gravity and the fact that it is relativistic. See neither G nor C appear on the left hand side. Capital G and C appear on the right side which essentially says that we are talking indeed about gravity because capital G the Newton's gravitational constant is the hallmark of gravity and existence of speed of light tells me that general relativity is indeed a relativistic theory of gravitation. Sometimes people make the mistake saying that look special relativity has a special case of general relativity that is absolutely wrong. General relativity rests on special relativity. Without special relativity you cannot make any sense of general relativity. So special relativity, uh, special relativity is the fundamental block on which rests uh, the relativistic theory of gravity. Right. The other thing uh, uh, before I start talking about linearization is the whole thing can be of course raised by the way uh, this is called the Einstein tensor. You can raise all the index upwards by using the metric tensor. So using g mu nu and the contravariant g mu nu. Contravariant g mu nu is defined from g mu nu as matrix inverse that is g mu alpha g alpha nu. So this is a definition is delta mu nu and so therefore using the contravariant metric tensor and or covariant metric tensor you can raise and lower indices. So you can raise the indices. So this is called the Einstein tensor because although Riemann, Ricci or all were known to uh, mathematicians but probably this particular form which plays important role in physics Einstein had introduced. So that is why it is called the Einstein tensor. As I jokingly said Einstein's only contribution to mathematics is a summation convention. Wherever two index repeat it means it is summed over. Einstein was a phenomenal physicist but uh, unlike Dirac, Feynman or um, who are the other people who have contributed so much to mathematics in recent times. Dirac Feynman, there is another who whose work is fun. Dirac contributed to distribution theory like the de Dirac delta function. Feynman of course his path integral gave a new thing to measure theory. There is someone, some other recent of course earlier physicists were mathematicians too like Lagrange or Hamilton. But in recent years apart from Dirac Feynman there is another who contributed significant lead to pure mathematics I am forgetting. Uh, right. Yeah. So supposing one was a pure mathematician, pure mathematician will only bother about these parts because all these were known to mathematicians. Riemann had calculated Riemann tensor, uh, Ricci had calculated Ricci tensor, Ricci scalar etc. They were already doing it in tensor calculus after Gauss had systematized how to do geometry on curved surfaces, tensor calculus was already known. But why should geometry have anything to do with physics and that is what Einstein and some people give credit to Poincare also although I am I have not studied the history part how much Poincare had gone into this um, connection between physics and geometry. But Einstein was the first person to link how matter would affect the geometry of the space time and that link is in the right hand side and the right hand side T mu nu, T mu nu is the energy momentum tensor of matter. Mathematicians will be hardly interested in matter. Mathematicians will be even less interested in coupling constants like capital G or speed of light. So the all aspect of physics is sitting in the left hand side and I am told that Einstein was unhappy in this split. He thought that everything should come out of the geometry. So 
a significant part of his life, he tried to geometrify even the right hand side. Unfortunately, the story probably, I don't know, string theory does the opposite. It even makes this part of the matter. Everything finally is strings. Anyway, I am not uh, much knowledgeable about string theory, but probably whatever I understand st in string theory, even there is nothing called geometry. Everything is some space time geometry appears as some kind of condensate of tiny graviton closed strings. So, even the geometry disappears in that sense, everything becomes matter. I hope I have answered the question. Right. Uh, yes, so I was uh, talking about Einstein tensor. So, one of the fundamental properties which was known to uh, the mathematicians is this, this object is 4 divergence less. That means what? That g mu nu semicolon nu is 0. So, remember my convention about semicolon being related to the covariant derivative and this is a mathematical statement. So, if you just take uh, the covariant derivative of the Einstein tensor, there is an identity, it follows from the Bianchi identities. It so happens that uh, the fact that this part is a scalar, you can show that under infinitable transformation of coordinates, the fact that this is a scalar, you can show that even independently, you can prove that t mu nu semicolon nu is equal to 0 just from the fact that the matter action does not transform under infinitesimal coordinate transformation. These are all given in Landau Lipschitz, uh, very elegant proof is given in Landau Lipschitz classical theory of fields. And probably, I do not know whether that was the route which Einstein took, probably the fact that these two are independently 0, maybe that is the reason why he guessed that the equation of motion. Uh, which connects matter with geometry must be this. Of course, there is a much more physical thing why he connected up this part and this part and that is he found that under weak field approximation that is static and weak field approximation. So, till then gravitation was only known from Newton's laws of gravitation and in Newton's law in Newton's theory of gravitation gravity does not change with time. And moreover, in relativistic standard, Newton's gravity is weak. What do you mean by weak? As we know in Newton's theory, the fundamental quantity was gravitational potential okay, and minus gradient of the gravitational potential was the gravitational force. But you can show that after all in Newton's theory, if you have a spherically symmetric matter distribution carrying mass, then the gravitational potential for a spherically symmetric matter distribution containing total mass m and with coordinate origin to be at the center of the mass, the potential is this. But Einstein or for that matter everyone knew that this potential is very weak. Weak means, means what? In physics, Whenever you say something is small, unless it is a dimensionless object, you have to compare with something of the same dimension. And Einstein was trying to build a relativistic theory of gravitation. So, what would he compare with? What dimension I mean, is same as dimension of gravitational potential is the c square. So, it is a very simple thing to work out. You work out phi x for sun, even for a uh, white dwarf, you will find that phi x divided by c square modulus is much less than 1. For earth it is negligible, for sun it is negligible, for white dwarf will just get appreciable. Only when you come to neutron star, it becomes appreciable. So, when we say weak fields, what we mean is that gravitational Newtonian gravitational potential is much much less compared to c square. And Einstein realized that if his theory has to be the correct theory of 
gravitation, it must agree with approximate theory which has been working so fine. In fact, all our satellite program, launching uh, rockets, putting Mars orbiter around Mars, everything is based on Newtonian gravitational dynamics. So, Newtonian gravitational dynamics at least in the weak field limit when the speeds are not very high, they are good enough. So, therefore, if you claim that this is a fundamental theory of gravity, you must show that how Newton's gravity emerges out of it and Einstein indeed showed that when you make speeds not, uh, when, when you have objects not moving uh, with speeds uh, as fast as speed of light and when the potentials are weak, indeed from Einstein's equation you can show you get back the Newton's equation. Newton's gravitation equation can be cast also in this form. Notice that in Newton's equation c square does not appear. This is miraculous that here c square were there, but when you came down c square have disappeared. That, that mystery is not uh, very high. If you multiply rho m by rho m into c square you get energy density. So, energy density by c square c square c square cancels here you have only mass. Okay. So, that in nutshell is uh, what general theory of relativity is all about. Uh, as I say, the rest is all a matter of detail. Um, yeah, uh, just one remark. The fact that this and this are linked makes this of course a consistent theory, but the important physical uh, interpretation of this equation is that as I said that to interpret anything physically in general relativity, you have to always resort to special theory of relativity. You ask what is the physical interpretation for this t mu semicolon nu equal to 0. You say that look, I will resort to special relativity that means what? I will go to a local inertial frame. When you go to a local inertial frame, what is the meaning of local inertial frame? Physically local inertial frame is a small enough frame of reference that is freely falling in gravity. Mathematically what it means is that your tiny frame of reference which is freely falling under gravity at the point inside this freely falling frame. So, inside this freely falling frame you have therefore, constructed Minkowski coordinate system which is what happens in special relativity. In that Minkowski coordinate system in this frame your metric g mu nu is eta mu nu exactly at this point and more actually not exactly at this point it is everywhere inside this small region, but exactly at this point what is 0 is the crystal symbol or the connection or I have erased that gamma mu alpha beta. Gamma mu alpha beta at one point inside this frame is 0, but because of the first derivative of metric. So, therefore, the fact that your crystal symbol is 0 at one point is the first derivative. So, therefore, in a uh, region small enough everywhere g mu nu is eta mu nu. So, at that point gamma mu alpha beta is 0 and because gamma mu alpha beta is 0 at that point your covariant derivative yeah covariant derivative becomes ordinary derivative. Remember wherever gamma mu alpha beta is 0 if this is 0 covariant derivative is ordinary partial derivative and therefore, in the local inertial frame your equation this equation has the form and this reminds you of the continuity equation like del rho by del t plus divergence of rho v equal to 0. It exactly reminds you of that continuity equation or in Maxwell's theory del j mu by del x mu equal to 0, del j mu by del x mu equal to 0 where j mu is the current density gives you what? Conservation of charge. So, similarly del t mu nu by del x nu gives you the conservation of the matter current. So, t mu nu, so t mu 0 hmm, is the matter current. So, that t mu nu 
del t mu nu by del x t equal to 0 tells you the local conservation of matter current. But that is only local. You do not have in general global conservation unless in the case of Maxwell theory. Even in curved space time del g mu nu by del x mu equal to 0 will even in curved space time will give you a global conserved charge. But you can show that starting from this you do not have a global energy conservation, global momentum conservation and general relativity, but local conservation is there. Only when you have a time like killing vector you can construct global conserved content. Yeah. No, it is not. So, the question is uh, that if there is local conservation of energy momentum tensor, does not it mean that globally it is conserved? So, let us ask what is the meaning of global conservation? It means that supposing you have the energy density, you integrate some kind of root minus g d cube x, you integrate over the entire space. If you have global energy conservation, this d by d t of this must be 0. You can show that this does not follow in general from the local conservation. Only if you have a time like killing vector everywhere. So, if you have a static gravity like in the case of short child geometry or you have stationary geometry like in the case of curved black hole uh, space time. When you have a time like killing vector everywhere, then from the local conservation of energy momentum tensor, you can have global conservation. What is the example to show that there is a case that where global energy is not conserved? The expanding universe. We know that when matter, the universe is expanding, when universe expands, what happens? The photon, any photon which is emitted from a far away galaxy, by the time it reaches us, it gets red shifted. But then you would have asked, where is this energy gone? But generally, it tells you that there is no global conservation of energy. So, there is no reason why photon which started with energy h nu should have the same energy all the time. Similarly, the fact that peculiar velocities of galaxies as the universe expands, the peculiar velocities of the galaxies, they go down. That is the reason why even though galaxies were formed with arbitrary peculiar velocities, but when you observe, you only see the Hubble flow. You do not there are peculiar velocity which that is the re reason why you have deviation from the Hubble law, but the peculiar velocities are smaller because as universe expands peculiar velocities go down as 1 over the scale factor. And therefore, the momentum of galaxies is not conserved because for a expanding universe there is no time like killing vector. So, global conservation in general is not there, but locally of course, it is conserved. So, locally when in a local frame if energy density somewhere is going down, what it means is there is a flux, something is going out. Okay. So, in that sense local conservation is still there. Right. So, now I will talk about weak, so weak static gravity we talked about, but now we are interested in something more. In Newton's gravity there was no gravity propagated instantly. If the sun were to disappear right now, then earth will be thrown in a tangential orbit because no centripetal force, but still although we will be thrown off tangentially, but sun will be still visible to us for the next 8 minutes okay, in Newton's gravity, but we know that that cannot be right. So, Einstein's relativity tells that even if sun were to disappear right now, we will be thrown off only after 8 minutes. because the gravitational perturbation will also move with speed c to tell us that sun has disappeared. That is what we are going to show now. So, now we are interested in weak field, but time varying situation.
uh, rather local conservation follows from the fact that your matter action is a uh, coordinate scalar that means matter action is invariant under general coordinate transformation from that itself local conservation follows. So, in a sense what you are saying is that local conservation of matter energy is a statement that your physics must not depend upon arbitrary coordinate choice of arbitrary coordinates, but in a sense it is something which you knew even from classical mechanics you know that the cyclic coordinates of Lagrangian you know that if the Lagrangian have uh, has cyclic coordinate that means if q i goes to q i plus alpha if the Lagrangian does not change that means action is invariant then the corresponding canonical momentum is conserved. So, here we have the symmetry is continuous that means we are saying that if x mu goes to x prime mu where x prime mu is some epsilon xi mu of x if under this inferencible coordinate transformation your action does not change then you have some symmetry and therefore, symmetry Noether's theorem you have local uh, current conservation. static or stationary I mean curved black hole is for example, not a static space time is stationary, but so time like killing vector meaning what that g mu nu your g mu nu. So, you have x 0 and x i. So, if you make translation this will be same as g mu nu x 0 plus some arbitrary constant epsilon x i. So, whenever your metric is such that this identity is satisfied that under translation of the time coordinate your metric does not change then you have time like uh, killing vector and this should happen everywhere and from that you can show whenever such a thing happens then global uh, energy and momentum is conserved. No, no, no question is stupid only an answerer can be stupid. good question. So, the her question is that uh, I talked about local inertial frame being local meaning small. So, her question is what decides the smallness. So, the answer to that is the smallness how big should your local inertial frame that scale comes from what is the scale over which your gravity changes. If the gravity changes only on scales of 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers, then any frame whose size is less than 30 or 40 kilometers is a local financial frame. Why did I choose 30, 40 kilometers as a number? Earth's gravity. We know that Earth's uh, for all terrestrial purposes 980 centimeter per second square is the acceleration due to gravity and this does not change within 30, 40 um, uh, kilometers, but when you go beyond that then your satellite which you are putting them in orbit you have to bother about the fact that the gravitational field is going as g m by r, but within 30 40 kilometers your g does not change appreciably. So, you can choose a uh, frame freely falling frame as big as 30 kilometers in size and inside that freely falling frame will be absolutely inertial as though there is no gravity at all for a small time by the way when I say local not only local in space local in time why is that? after a long time you start seeing the gravity imagine this is the earth this is a big frame you have chosen it is freely falling consider test particle. So, inside that you will find that the test particles they are freely floating, but after some time remember if this is the center and this is being attracted more than this. So, what will happen is for after a long time you will see that these two are coming close ok sorry these two are getting separated because this accelerating faster than this while these two are coming close because they are all falling towards the center. So, therefore, after some time after a long enough time you will find that these points are getting stretched to an ellipse if you started with a circle it is getting stretched and when gravitational wave detection this precisely this principle is used the tidal 
deformation this is what is used for detection of gravitational waves because the Riemann tensor ah there is something I forgot to mention the Riemann tensor r mu nu alpha beta geometrically we know it is it has a geometrical uh, interpretation it is to do with when you go back so I did not mention about the geometrical interpretation of the Riemann tensor let me mention it. So, if you take a vector and parallelly transport the vector around a closed curve then it is the Riemann tensor which will tell you whether the vector will come back to itself or there will be a deficit angle. If the Riemann tensor is 0 then it will come back to itself while if the Riemann tensor is not 0 these are all geometrical phenomena nothing to do with physics. So, if you take a vector parallelly transport around a closed curve if your Riemann tensor of the whatever space you have chosen if the Riemann tensor is not 0 then when the vector comes back to itself it is chain it can be easily trans geometrically shown on the surface of the sphere. So, if you take the surface of the sphere this is the north pole. So, imagine that these are 90 degrees you, you take the vector parallelly transport when it comes here parallelly transport it comes here parallelly transport by the time it has come here is no longer the same it has got rotated by 90 degrees because this is the surface of the sphere and surface of the sphere the Riemann tensor is not 0 and these are geometric nothing to do with physics, but in Einstein's theory the Riemann tensor has an additional role apart from the geometry and it is to do with this tidal, tidal force is the Riemann tensor which tells you about the tidal force the true gravitational degree rests on the Riemann tensor if the Riemann tensor is 0 there is no gravity a, 0 everywhere that means if you have uniform gravity if g was constant if you have everywhere uniform gravity 980 centimeter per second square everywhere it is equivalent to no gravity because every you can choose as big a frame as you wish let it freely form freely fall and absolutely no gravity special relativistic laws are applicable. So, uniform gravity is equivalent to no gravity Riemann tensor tells you that there is the gravity is not uniform and therefore, the true non trivial gravity is when Riemann tensor is non zero okay. yeah. yeah. what would be yeah so is the is the riemann uh, is the ricci scalar r so the length scale is roughly 1 over square root of r okay as you know uh, yeah yeah, so uh, his question was that uh, given any arbitrary matter distribution how do I know what will be the scale of what will be the size of the local inertial frame. So, for that if you have matter distribution from the Einstein equation. So, from Einstein equation you can contract it if you contract it what will you get. So, multiply so here you will get r minus half into 4 into r 8 pi g by c 4 you will get trace of the energy momentum tensor. So, minus so minus r is 8 pi g by c 4 t. So, therefore, if your matter distribution is known you can find out what is the trace of the energy momentum and from this itself you can find out what is the uh, Ricci scalar and that will tell you what, sh what is the scale over which your local inertial frame holds good.
No, no, Ricky tensor is Riemann is not zero. Mm. Yeah. No, no. So, what I am saying is that first, since you are now given only matter, your question was that you have given only me only matter. If you have given me matter, then just from this identity, this is pure matter, but of course, it is not pure matter because energy moment and tensor will have hidden metric. Your matter action has hidden metric, but at the moment, we are making simple uh, order of magnitude estimate. So, if you have matter distribution, I can calculate the trace of the energy momentum tensor and that would give me some idea and matter distribution is varying. So, this T will not be a constant, it will be space time dependent. So, from that I can have an idea about R because C 4 by 8 pi g. So, actually if, even if this fluctuates very much, the fluctuation in R will be small because it is damped by g by C 4. That is the reason why geometrical effects are tiny even though matter effects are large, they are damped by capital G by C 4. So, so you will have an idea about the scale, but now you say that oh what happens where the matter is not there outside the surface of the neutron star, but continuity use continuity argument and say if you are not very far from the matter the scale is still same and then you say if you go beyond it should follow up as 1 over r square. So, you can use this continuity argument to get into order of magnitude estimate of the length scale uh, of the uh, freely falling frame of reference. Right. So, now let us talk about cases where your matter is uh, the density of matter is not very high, it is loosely bound and the motion inside the matter is sub relativistic, they are not moving very fast and you. So, imagine physically we have some kind of a matter distribution of course, they are moving, some part is moving out, this is moving in and so on, but these motion they are much less compared to the speed of light and the density of this matter distribution is low enough and you are somewhere here, you are the observer and you are having your LIGO detector okay. and you want to know if this is changing the matter distribution is changing with time, what kind of effects would you see far away from the changes that are taking place in matter. So, in the back of your mind you can think of as a supernova explosion. So, this could be a supernova explosion. So, you will soon learn a lot about astrophysical sources of gravitation or you can think of two stars going around the common center of mass. So, the all these are cases of matter distribution changing with time and you are interested in knowing that what does general relativity predict concerning things happening due to this. And remember if the origin is here somewhere you are very far away. So, so this is the observer coordinate is let us say r. If this is the origin observer is at r. Now, since the density of the matter is very low, remember when we are talking about Newtonian approximation, phi x will be where ah, Poisson equation, the uh, uh, Newtonian dynamical equation. If the density is low, obviously the Newtonian potential is also low. So, that is the reason I am talking about density, the averaged out density of the matter distribution is low. And we are now asking the question, how do we do general relativity for such a system? Einstein had already done it. So, let us go systematically. We say that look, the gravity is not very strong. 
So therefore, we would expect that the geometry is almost Minkowskian geometry, almost, but not quite. So therefore, you say that look, if the curvature effects are small, then I should be able to tell, uh, I should be able to use local Minkowski coordinate system. What does it mean? So, local Minkowski coordinate system, what it means is, not local, sorry, quasi Minkowskian, quasi Minkowski coordinates. What it means is that your coordinate system x mu are such, remember metric depends upon the coordinate system. You change your coordinate system, metric will also change. The only thing which does not change is a Ricci scalar, it is a scalar, so therefore it will not change. So, what I mean by choosing quasi Minkowski coordinate system is that if you express the metric in this coordinate system, it can be written as the flat space time Minko uh, Minkowski metric plus a perturbation h mu nu as a perturbation. And why do I say that this is a perturbation? What is the maximum magnitude of eta mu nu? 1, because eta mu nu is the maximum. So, if this is a perturbation, then h mu nu modulus should be much, much less compared to 1. You can show, again take it as a tutorial problem, you can show the contravariant metric then is contravariant Minkowski tensor minus h mu nu of x. But what is this h mu nu upstairs? I only talked about h mu nu downstairs as a perturbation. h mu nu upstairs is defined to be. So, that means h mu nu of x lambda is defined to be eta mu alpha eta nu beta h alpha beta of x. That means, they are raised by Minkowski metric. So, these are called weak field limit or linearized gravity. In the linearized gravity, raising and lowering is done by Minkowski metric. You might say why? After all, we could have used g mu nu. But as you can see, if you use g mu nu for raising and lowering, this is already small, this is already small, the effects will be quadratically small, very will be damp. So, all the raising and lowering will be done by the Minkowski metric alone. Okay. <coughs> right. So, so in other words, in other words, uh, uh, to just make a complete statement, h mu nu, the perturbation is not a general second rank tensor. It does not transform as a tensor under general coordinate transformation. h mu nu is a low range second rank tensor, because all the transformation rule you are using the Minkowski metric. So, the transforms under Lorentz transform, uh, under Lorentz transformation. For people, particle physicists, this is good news, because h mu nu is precisely the perturbation of a closed string loop. So, if there only special relativity operates. So, it is for string theory, it is actually the amplitude for a string vibration, nothing to do with geometry. Because only they are related to Lorentz transformation, which is the basis of quantum field theory. Right. So, we are now talking about linearized case, where effects of curved space time is only a small perturbation over the flat space time. Okay. And now, we want to study what equation, what dynamical equation does this perturbation h mu nu satisfy. Obviously, it has to follow from the Einstein equation. Okay. So, now let us evaluate various quantities, geometrical quantities given that this is my metric.
Right. So, let us evaluate first crystal symbol. Gamma mi alpha beta, I have erased somewhere, but it does not matter, I can write it again. And as you can see that this g mu lambda, so in the weak field limit and why? Because there is only this perturbation term, but this will have only h mu nu because when I take derivatives, eta mu nu's are constant, I will have derivatives of h mu nu. So, therefore, that will be only quadratic. So, therefore, I need to only take the Minkowski contravariant tensor and this becomes okay so in weak field limit <coughs> my crystal symbol gamma mu alpha beta is half eta mu lambda lambda of course is a dummy variable h lambda alpha comma beta h lambda beta comma alpha minus h lambda alpha but we want to also construct the riemann tensor and riemann tensor as we have seen is related to the derivative of the crystal symbol I will not write this down because as you can see that gamma mu alpha beta up to first order in the perturbation is given by this. These are quadratic. So, quadratic will be second order term. So, therefore, I am at the moment not interested in higher order correction. So, therefore, my Riemann tensor becomes this. So, let us expand this as you can see that this half eta mu lambda I can take common and then I will have to take derivatives. So, therefore, I will have h lambda nu comma beta plus h lambda beta comma nu so i have taken this part similarly minus now the derivative with respect to x beta one moment i have to take derivative with this to alpha also alpha alpha and then I have to take the derivative with respect to beta. So, I have h lambda nu comma alpha beta plus h lambda alpha nu beta minus h <coughs> nu lambda beta. Okay. Remember comma is partial derivatives and since partial derivative commute with each other as you can see this cancels with this. Okay. So, that 
we have a quantity where half eta mu lambda and the rest of the quantities I have to be careful, I should not miss out any uh, index, otherwise everything, all the efforts will go down the drain. So, let us see, everything is correct, half eta mu lambda h lambda beta comma nu alpha minus h nu beta comma lambda alpha minus h lambda alpha nu beta plus h nu alpha lambda beta. So far, so good. So, this is my <coughs> Riemann tensor in the linearized approximation. Now, I want to calculate the Ricci tensor. Ricci tensor by definition is contracting the upper index with the second index. Okay. So, wherever I have alpha I will set it to mu. Let us see, all the indices have been taken correctly, half eta mu lambda, h lambda beta nu mu, right. Now, slowly I can probably, yeah, there is this part. Now, let us isolate certain terms, so that we can, so let us isolate <coughs> this term first. Let us isolate this term. This I will first write it down as minus half eta mu lambda, one moment, nu beta comma lambda mu. So, this term I have isolated and then I have the rest of the quantities. We will see what we will do with the rest of the quantity. So, minus half eta mu lambda h lambda beta. Note that since I am raising and lowering using the Lorentz, uh, using the Minkowski tensor, eta mu lambda, lambda is being raised. So, therefore, this can be written as minus, minus or plus plus half lambda is being raised. So, h nu beta nu mu. So, this I have taken, this I have already taken into account. Then minus <coughs> half, again lambda is being taken upstairs nu beta, then plus half, okay. we have h eta nu mu is being taken upstairs. <coughs> so, lambda mu has been taken upstairs and lambda. But I can call wherever there is lambda, I can just be the dummy index. So, I can call lambda to be mu itself. Okay. Now, note what is this quantity? 
So this, if you write it down in expanded form, it is eta mu lambda h nu beta comma lambda mu is, is a second uh, partial derivative. And what is this object? Special relativity. These are all special relativity. There is nothing but del 2 h nu beta by del x 0 square minus Laplacian of h nu beta. Remember, nu and mu and lambda is being summed over. Hmm. So, correct. There is a dialembician box of h nu beta, which is nothing but 1 over c square del 2 by del t square minus Laplacian of h nu beta. Okay. So, this is nothing but minus half box okay now look at this h mu mu contracted what is h mu mu contracted is a trace this is a trace or in expanded form the same as h mu nu h mu mu okay so because we are raising and lowering using only the Minkowski tensor. So, mu, mu is being raised to h nu nu, which is the trace of the perturbation, linearized perturbation. All right. So, this can be written as just trace. Now, the next question you would ask is, can we use some kind of a gauge degree of freedom like one does in electrodynamics to simplify the expression for the Ricci tensor. Can we do some gauge degree of freedom so that my Ricci tensor is simply this, these terms are not there at all. Okay. By the way, let us take half common so that this object can be written as And the answer is yes. Supposing, I will tell you why that gauge can always be taken. Supposing I choose my coordinate system. Remember, I am already in quasi Minkowskian coordinate system, but quasi Minkowskian coordinate system is not unique. I will tell more about it. I can choose, given a space time, there are infinitely many ways of choosing quasi Minkowskian coordinate system. So, therefore, Supposing I choose a particular quasi Minkowskian coordinate system such that the following thing happens, such that del by del x mu of h mu nu minus half delta mu nu trace h is 0. Okay. This is called the harmonic coordinate harmonic coordinate system. So, that coordinate system that quasi Minkowskian coordinate system in which your h mu nu is such that it satisfies this equation is called the harmonic coordinate condition. You choose that coordinate system you will find that this gets highly simplified. How is it? So, it can be uh, understood in the following way. Look at this minus h nu beta, minus h nu beta I can split it into two parts, equal parts. So, I can write it as minus half, minus half h nu beta and minus half h nu beta. And what have I gained uh, doing this? you can sh see that what this has become is this can be written as as usual minus box h nu beta and this part I can rewrite it as the following. First what I will do is I will take derivative with respect to mu or nu take derivative with respect to x nu and write that object as. So, there is a derivative with respect to nu here, derivative with respect to nu here. 
So I'll take derivative with respect to nu, and then I have h mu beta comma mu. So this I have taken, then minus half. Derivative nu is gone. Only derivative with respect to beta is there. So this is this part has been taken. So these two parts have been taken. Now come to this. Then I can take plus derivative with respect to beta. I'll take del by del x beta. So I should be consistent with my bracketing thing. Since I've already used square bracket, I'll use curly bracket here. So let's take this derivative with respect to beta. I have taken so h mu nu comma mu h mu comma mu and minus half this part h comma nu beta. I have already taken. Okay. Top part here is visible, right? I'll not. So this top part is visible everywhere, okay? Now see the magic. So therefore, r nu beta minus half box h nu beta plus half. Now look at here. There is a derivative with respect to mu, but this is a derivative with respect to beta. These are the mathematical jugglery one has to make oneself familiar with if you want to be a general relativist, because the techniques are all tensor calculus. So one has to become adapt at uh, using all kinds of tensorial manipulation. So this derivative with respect to mu, but there is derivative with beta. I want to make a derivative with respect to mu. So what will I do? I use the Kronecker delta, introduce it here. So del by del x nu I'll write it as minus half. I want beta some derivative with this mu, so therefore I'll use beta delta beta mu h derivative with this to beta. Because beta is a dummy index, okay. Sorry, I want to do it the other way around. Beta is not a dummy index, mu is a dummy index because beta is very much there. So beta mu comma mu. So mu is a dummy index. So when you sum it over, mu becomes beta. So I have not done anything. I have just played around using the Kronecker delta. Similarly here plus del by del x beta h mu nu comma mu. Here also I want to do the same thing, minus half. I want to write derivative with respect to mu, but the derivative is with respect to nu. So nu is not a dummy variable. So therefore, what I'll do is I'll say nu, nu, and then h comma mu. So that after you get back your h nu. But this is precisely, so I'll come back here now because the lower part will not be visible. So therefore, what I have essentially obtained is r nu beta is minus half box of h nu beta. Now see what has happened. This is with respect to mu, so I can take the derivative. The whole thing, derivative with respect to mu, can be taken outside the bracket. So del by del x mu. Similarly. Here the derivative is from you. I can again take the derivative outside del by del x mu. But then, as I said, that we can impose a harmonic coordinate condition. The harmonic coordinate condition is this, and therefore, in the harmonic coordinate condition, these two terms just go to zero, and the Ricci tensor becomes just r nu beta. Equal to minus half h nu beta. So a great deal of simplification has occurred 
because of the use of harmonic gauge condition. Okay, I'll tell you why this can. Oh, I have overshot. Okay, huh? is that eleven o'clock? Okay, great. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so we have got this equation. Now note, it is this equation which tells you the gravitational perturbation must travel with speed of light in vacuum. Why is it so? Well, remember Einstein equation which says r mu nu minus half g mu nu r is 8 pi g c 4 t mu nu. You can contract just like we got that equation r is equal to minus 8 pi g by c. You can contract, you can show that you can write this equation also as so, this follows mathematically trace of the energy moment and time. So, Einstein equation, this is another way of writing the Einstein equation. What this tells you is in vacuum that is outside the matter, T mu nu is 0, therefore, trace of energy moment and density is also so in vac 0. So, in vacuum, R mu nu is 0. And in our gauge, what we see is that in vacuum therefore, in empty space, since r, r nu beta is 0, therefore, we have got the equation box of h nu beta is 0 in empty space. But this is nothing but the wave equation with speed with the wave travelling with speed c. So, this conclusively proves that any gravitational perturbation linearized gravitational perturbation travels with the speed of light that is what Einstein wanted. So, it is a so it tells you that Newton's gravity cannot be correct. Okay. Now, let us go ahead by the way uh, probably in the tutorial I will show why this gauge condition is always you can always choose coordinate system such so that that harmonic gauge condition is always right. So, that your r nu beta can become this. Now, let us calculate the Ricci scalar, because after all we have to set up the Einstein equation. Have you what? Have you Nothing, no cheating, okay. only approximations. So, that is the point I want to do. Uh, whenever I teach in the class, I tell them physics, there is no cheating involved, true physics. Okay. There are physicists who cheat, but in true physics, that is the reason I encourage questions. Okay. No, I am not accusing you, I am just asking this. So I have this question. So, yeah. H mu nu, we are assuming that this is a perturbation, right? Yes. And then there are these gravitational waves. I think gravitational waves. The approximations are weak, that is the only approximation. That means, I am not taking quadratic terms in the perturbation, that is the only approximation. Otherwise, there is no other approximation. So, in all the mathematical manipulation, the only thing I have neglected is wherever there are quadratic terms in H mu nu, that is all. Otherwise, everything is exact. Yeah, you, have, you had a question. Linearized first order, yes. So, we cannot talk about in the curve space time what is the speed of the trap. Even so, Landau Lipschitz does it. So, even in curved space time, so what we did was we expanded the perturbation around the Minkowski metric. You can say no, supposing you have a background, if you have short shell geometry, and you say that in the short shell geometry, Bala Iyer is an expert on that. If in short shell geometry, if you have perturbation, then what happens? So, you perturb around the short chain metric. There also you will see that gravitational waves propagate with speed c. So, perturbation concerning black hole metric, what kind of perturbation, the quasi normal modes, I do not know whether you are going to cover those aspects. So, is this now a general result or 
result or or is it just valid till where we have tested? Uh, uh, what is general? Does gravitational waves travel at speed of light? No, but first of all, there is no direct determination of gravitational wave as yet. No, I mean theoretically. Ah, is it theoretically, theoretically, accepted theoretically that irrespective of the background, they will travel at speed of light. Is it? So, you know, you have to be very, very careful about the group velocity is C. So, yeah, so, you have a complicated gravitational wave, then the phase velocity need not be C, but the group velocity will be C. It is a very good question. The question has been asked is whether this result is a coordinate independent result or not. It is coordinate dependent in the following sense that those coordinates where this cage condition is satisfied, this result is valid. But now you say that look, it is only a special class of coordinate system. In the tutorial, I will show that there is nothing special about it. You can always choose a coordinate system. I mean, so therefore, the fact that no matter what your situation is, no matter what is your physical condition, the fact that you can always choose a coordinate system such that this is true, that means it is true generally. It is exactly like what happens in electrodynamics. You, if, you, if you recall something about electrodynamics, how electromagnetic waves are obtained, you will find that electromagnetic waves will satisfy I have forgotten plus minus it does not matter this will be del mu a mu and some uh, derivative probably in vacuum something of this kind plus or minus I am just recalling from memory so it, I might be wrong some factors no it can not be okay so this is some kind of but this is not a wave equation. For wave equation, you need box A mu must be equal to 0. But then you say that look, A mu is the vector potential, they transform under gauge transformation. So, you make a gauge transformation to some scalar function chi, and chi can be arbitrary and is always allowed because why is it always allowed? Because A mu is not observable. What is observable are the electric fields and magnetic fields. Electric and magnetic electric fields and magnetic fields, they do not transform under this transformation. So, therefore, I can always choose a gauge, I can always choose a chi such that del nu a nu is 0, which is called the Lorentz gauge, I think. That is called the Lorentz gauge. So, you can always choose a gauge, Lorentz gauge. In the Lorentz gauge, your equation simply becomes a nu equal to 0 which is the wave equation which says that electromagnetic waves also travel with speed c. Similarly, we will argue that what you observe is the coordinate independent quantities like Riemann tensor. Riemann tensor is a tidal force that is what we observe. Riemann tensor is that Riemann tensor which is you physically measure that does not depend upon the choice of the coordinate system. So, in other words, uh, what we are seeing is that general relativity is actually a gauge theory. And what is the gauge transformation here? Infinitesimal coordinate transformation. In fact, I mean this is a little bit of philosophy. I mean anyone who has read Weinberg thoroughly, it is this aspect which enabled people like uh, Weinberg, Desser, etc., to throw away the geometrical aspects of general relativity and treat H mu nu as a spin two field. So, the entire string theory by the way is based on that formalism that any spin to field in uh, flat space time, I mean Weinberg shows that any spin to field if it has to have a invariant description, it must couple to energy momentum tensor of the matter. And therefore, he people like Weinberg, Desser, Suraj Narayan Gupta, S N Gupta, famous S N Gupta they have shown that entire general relativity can be recovered not from the geometrical aspect, but from treating h mu as spin to field 
and taking nonlinear effects and you can get back Einstein equation and that is the philosophy of the string theory. But that is a mystery that on one hand you have Einstein and Hilbert geometrical program on the other hand string theory program. So, hardcore relativists will not like the string theory program will like to quantize gravity from the geometrical point and that is what Ashtekar did. Ashtekar stuck to quantizing the geometrical aspect. Yeah, there was some question. Yeah. Density, low density. No, 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 no. See, uh, as I argued, my argument was that h mu nu is very tiny. When is h mu nu tiny? Because from Newton's law itself, h 0 0 by the way is related to the Newtonian gravitational potential. h 0 0 you can show h 0 0 is just 2 phi by c square. So, because we know this is the case, when are you going to have weak fields even inside the matter distribution, not far away, but this is a equation which is true inside the matter distribution. So, if you are trying going to talk about h mu nu even close to the matter distribution, then phi better be small even when inside the matter, then the density better be small enough. Not really, even if you take two neutron stars going around, on the neutron star density is very high, but if you take a binary neutron star, the average density, let us take Hull-Steller binary pulsar. In Hull-Steller binary pulsar, the two neutron stars are going around the period, orbital period is about 8 hours. The orbital separation is very large, so average out density is very low. During the merging, uh, then numerical relativity, then you all these exercise is useless. When they are merging, you are having strong gravity consider analytical calculations are not, but Bala has done lot of work taking various orders of um, uh, post Newtonian approximation. So, maybe he will uh, have much accurate and better things to tell what happens when you have the stronger things are prevailing when the density is uh, prevailing. Right. So, is there any other question? Yeah. yeah. They are? Yes. Those are only words. Okay. Yeah. So, do you have an eta mu Do you the, have a background which is because and then what is the background? Uh -huh. Yeah. The background? Good question. So, her question is that we started from g mu nu written as the background Minkowski metric eta mu nu and a tiny perturbation. Now, the question is realistically it is true. It is yes consider earth going around sun. So, we are talking about setting up detectors and measuring gravitational wave. So, we ask is there such a quasi Minkowskian coordinate system is there where background uh, geometry is eta mu nu? The answer is yes take earth going around earth uh, sun. Why is earth going around sun is almost inertial frame earth is freely falling. Earth is freely falling in uh, sun's gravity. Yes, there are tidal, the waves, tidal waves are precisely because of the Riemann tensor not being 0. So, the fact that the part of the ocean closer to the sun is bulged, the fact the diametrical opposite part of the ocean is also bulged is because of the tidal distortion. But within your detector, within your 2 kilometers or 3 kilometers long arm of the LIGO, within that remember the, your mirrors are hanging freely. So, you are setting up local inertial frame of reference, so that the background metric indeed is eta mu nu. So, these questions are important because when you are actually going to make a connection of all the theory with the experiments, these issues are very, very important. But there are issues like which coordinate system have we chosen, the tidal after all what we are seeing, uh, we will talk about it more is the in the fringe shift in any interference experiment. The fringe shift is due to what? So, all these issues what coordinate system we have chosen are very, very important. So, physics of general and their special relativity comes in very important. What are lengths? What are time? Uh, special relativity is very important and that is part of the physics of general relativity. Yeah. So, we can say that in background we have chosen, we have chosen this harmonic coordinate system and in this harmonic coordinate system we can always write 
Huh. You can always have this. Yeah. But as I said, harmonic coordinate, coordinate system can always be chosen, That's no matter, no matter what situation. I mean, that harmonic coordinate system, G mean you will take this form. R mean you beta, not G mean you. This is only for R nu beta, yes. but G mu nu being eta mu nu plus H mu nu, this statement is a physical statement. This statement, this statement has nothing to do with this statement. No, uh, let me first finish. This statement is a particular physical case where your physical geometry, space-time geometry is almost flat geometry exactly like what happens near the surface of the earth. Near the surface of the earth, you draw any triangle, the sum of the interior angles of the triangle is 180 degrees. The non-Euclidean geometry never manifests itself in small regions. So therefore, near the surface of the earth, this approximation is valid. But then I am saying that I can always choose even maintaining this, I can always choose a set of coordinate system where this will be still valid, but this will, this condition can be. And what? So be, before we will talk about it uh, pro probably in the next class. But let me give you the result. The coordinate transformation we are talking about is infinitesimal. Coordinate transformation. What happens there? is your old quasi Minkowskian coordinate system goes to new quasi Minkowskian coordinate system related to some parameter epsilon which is very tiny and a vector field, arbitrary vector field, space time dependent vector fields I mu. So, this is a vector field. Coordinates are not vectors, x mu is not a vector, x prime mu is not vector. Sometimes very often students when I teach just because mu is upstairs they think that these are vectors, they are not. R theta phi they are not uh, vectors. Xi mu is however a vector and this is an infinitesimal coordinate transformation and you can show that under because epsilon is very tiny again epsilon is so tiny that I will take only linear order terms not second order terms. Then even this will be valid and you can show that you can choose your Xi mu effect. Xi mu your vector field is in your hand you can choose Xi mu I will show how to choose that and you can demand by appropriate choice of xi mu that the loading the uh, harmonic coordinate condition is satisfied so, so yeah Yeah, you can do that, but that, that, but but then it's why would you? Not at every point. I know. I just short shell. Take the short shell, the black hole geometry. So very far away from black hole, this is still true. Yeah. But only very far, not close to the black yeah. hole. But I am saying <coughs> this, I mean, separation of g mu in eta mu plus f mu can be done in harmonic coordinates. No, harmonic coordinates have nothing to do with this. Harmonic coordinates <laughs> is the coordinate system which makes this but condition I mean, 0. This has nothing to do with harmonic coordinate. Okay, then in what coordinate system huh. this will happen? I am not asking for one living thing. I am not asking for one living thing. I know. So, you, are, you want to. In coordinate system this cannot happen, right? Give me new to space time. No, wait. Go systematically. First, take your example. Take a strong gravitational object, neutron star, black hole, <coughs> near the surface of a neutron star or near the event horizon of the black hole, this is not valid. But when you go very far away, because in the case of Schwarzschild geometry, G00 is 1 minus 2 gm by c square r, G11 is minus 1 over 2 gm by c square r, the rest of the things are spherical polar coordinate system. So, you can see that when r goes to infinity, r becomes very large, eta 00 plus a tiny number. This is also when r goes to very large it is minus 1 plus a tiny number. So, that is uh, satisfied. Okay. So, what? No, even in near the horizon this is no longer true. This is no longer true. 
<laughs> no, you can't. If you try to do that, h mu nu, h, it won't be small. H mu nu, if you try to write it near the, so again, go back to the um, uh, Schwarzschild case. This is still eta 0, 0. Minus 1 is still eta 1, 1. But this near the horizon is very large. It is not less than, much, much less than 1. Here, remember what was the condition? The condition is mod h mu nu is much, much less than 1. That is violated near the event horizon. I, I think you forgot that when we took the linear analysis, this condition is something very important. That is the reason I was neglecting quadratic terms. Yeah. No, it is very important to raise because. No, I never talked about far off. All, all I am saying is that this condition, eta min plus, plus mod h mu nu, much, much less than 1 is a condition of weak gravity. Has nothing to do with the harmonic gate condition. 